Hey friends, my name is Jose Okondo. I'm a Chattanooga-based Webflow developer. And a couple of days ago, I ran across this site, Nayara Travel. And first of all, it's a stunning, beautiful website. Um, <laughs> up here in the header, I think this is WebGL. It's creating this kind of like 3D um, effect with the image. Lovely kind of fading in of content here in this section. Um, I invite you to explore this site, but the thing that caught my eye was the slider. There's a lot of cool things about it, but um, from an animation perspective, what I really liked was the parallax effect of the images. So you can kind of, if you pay attention to the boy's face here, you know, like as you go through, um, there's just this really beautiful kind of sideways motion of the images. And we won't be able to kind of 100% um, copy this effect in Webflow um, using just the Webflow slider component and Interactions 2.0, but we can get really, really close. Um, so I spent some time working on this before recording, and I think we can get almost all the way there. Okay, so we're going to start naming things right off the bat just so that it's really easy to start editing. Um, and Let's slide. Make sure I hit that. Um, and let's go ahead and name our buttons. Parallax. And I'm using parallax as a prefix just because um, this is the same Webflow project I have all the tutorials in, so I'm just wanting to make sure um, <laughs> I'm distinguishing between uh, tutorials. With the dot navigation, we don't need that, so I'm just going to use a utility class I have already set to go, display none which will get rid of that. And let's go ahead and hide the buttons temporarily um, just so that we can focus on the slider. All right, now, one of the sometimes annoying things about Webflow components is they'll sometimes have hidden styles where you're like racking your brain, why is it behaving this way? And it's because it has a style that is just not showing up here in the style tab, but is affecting um, the way that the component is behaving. And the slider is one of the <laughs> criminals of um, that crime. And both the mask and the slider have a fixed height attached to them. Don't ask me why, because here it says auto. But if you just go ahead and set those to auto, kind of declare that, um, you'll see that the height of the slider changes. And now the height of it will respond to the height of the content inside of it, which is uh, exactly what we want. All right, if I go back to um, Nyara, um, basically we're going to treat each of these cards um, like a slide. And we can do that by uh, affecting the mask here. So before I do anything, let me go ahead and remove this background color. And let's set the width of the mask to something like 344 pixels or so. And that is going to uh, be about the size of these cards. And then um, if I set the overflow to visible, um, we're going to see multiple slides in the same view. So let me actually hold off doing that for just a second. Inside of the slide, I'm going to add a div block and we're going to use a ratio card inside of there. Um, by ratio card, I basically mean um, there's a commonly known padding top hack where you can create a ratioed element. Um, and so, for example, like let's say we wanted a perfect square with the padding top, I would set that to 100%. And the reason that works is because um, the padding, any relative units are always relative to the width of the element. So by setting this to 100%, we're telling the browser we want the height to be 100% of the width. And the width is set by the mask, 344 pixels. Okay, so I'm going to leave this at 166. Um, but I am going to duplicate this and actually create a card that's 200% padding top because that's very close, I think, to the card that we're seeing on Nyara. Then this is because this is set to position relative, I can set a absolutely positioned element inside of it. And I've got this utility class ready to go called image cover, which basically sets it to position absolute pinned to the top left width and height of 100% and a fit of cover. Um, so that's how I do a lot of this type of stuff, these cards. Okay, so let's add just a random image that was in the assets folder. 
we're going to add another div block and we're going to call this parallax hard inner set it to position absolute full and then we're going to give it some generous padding like 40 pixels or so and then if you notice in the card there's content in the top and content on the bottom we can use flexbox um, to do that super easily just make sure it's vertical a line stretch is perfect but we want to make sure it's justify space between and now when i add two div blocks inside of that absolutely position element um, they're at the top and the bottom so let me add a uh, text block here and make sure it's nested let me set the parallax card inner the font color to white and call this africa and we'll give it uh, an overline class now let's copy that also add a heading a paragraph whoops sorry and a button and we'll make this an h2 and a trip and it's not uh, perfect but this gets us really really close to what we're seeing on Nayara, right okay so what I was talking about before with the slide was, let's say I copy this and paste it. There are three, you can see the navigator, you can even see their bounding boxes. <laughs> um, but we're not seeing it because again, the mask is set to overflow hidden. So if I set that to overflow visible, we'll be able to see these slides and then I can just use 32 pixels of margin right to space them apart. Okay, let's talk about the animation and how we're going to try to achieve that parallax motion from left to right. Um, essentially, what I'm going to try to do, or the idea that I had, and I'm sure there's probably a few different ways to do this, um, but just relying on Webflow only, interactions and the slider component, uh, this is the idea that I had. <laughs> and basically, the technology will be to make the image inside of the card slightly wider than the card itself, and then when somebody clicks on the slider buttons, we're going to move the image left or right and then snap it back into place to mimic that feeling of a parallax um, image, parallax slider. Okay, so to do that, um, one thing that I did discover when I was doing this previously is if I leave this the way it is now because this is set to... Um, or... Uh, let me try to explain it here. Let me call this parallax image cover. So what I was talking about was like, okay, let's set this to 120%. So we've got this extra information. We need to make the ratio card overflow hidden. Um, and if I click on the image, you're going to see that we've got the image is bleeding out of the card. So we've got some extra information. But if in the animation we try to move it to the left, this would actually all be empty pixels. There wouldn't actually be image there. Um, and we need that information, obviously, to make the parallax uh, thing work. So my fix for that was to add a div block, nest this inside of there, and call this, uh, whoops, parallax image wrapper. Okay, this is going to be set to position absolute. And then the way we're going to get that extra image information to play with is by adding this here. And now, because this image is nested inside of here, we will have the extra image information to play with. I hope that will make sense <laughs> in just a little bit. Um, before I move on, let me delete these two slides and add a few more. And you know what, just for funsies, uh, let me go ahead and change up some of the images here um, just so we can kind of see uh, the effect in full force. Okay, so something like that should work. All right, let us bring back our buttons. So take off that display none. And we're going to set the width and height to 88. Um, give it a background color of white. Set it to a radius of 50% to get that perfect circle. 
Um, and then we, um, the Webflow icon uh, is in here. We can control through the um, text color. Just give it that blue color. Um, and then let's go ahead and do a quick um, shadow, something like uh, this. Okay. And then I like where the right button is. It's kind of straddling this little gutter here. But with the left hand side, let's call this left button. And we'll just move it 50% to the left. Negative 50%. Ah, there we go. So that it's um, aligned on the edge of the card there. Okay, so if we've done all of this correctly, um, we're seeing the image behave, or the slider behave the way it's supposed to. Now we get to the fun part, <laughs> which is the animation. And I'm gonna tie the animation to the buttons themselves. So there is a, like if you click on slide, there is a slider change, um, but I wanna actually move the image left and right based on which direction the slider is going. So I'm gonna actually use these buttons. And so on mouse click, we're gonna start a new animation and slide moves left. Okay. And then I'm gonna choose the image here, click move. And um, when the uh, slider is moving to the left, I wanna move the image a little bit to the right and then snap it back. Um, so I'm gonna move it to the right 8% and immediately move it back to 0% and hit save. One thing I forgot to do is with the slider settings, we want to make sure that whatever you decide, and if, if you create this, <laughs> um, you need to know the durations. So I'm going to set mine to 400 and I'm going to also set the easing to uh, ease out quad, I think. Let me check that out. Yeah. Okay. And um, you kind of saw <laughs> that with this, we're already starting to imitate that parallax motion a little bit, um, but the timing is off, the easing is off. Um, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to set the first one to 0.1 seconds or 100 milliseconds and the second one to 0.3. That adds up to 0.4 or 400 milliseconds which, if I go back to the slider settings, is exactly how long we're asking it to slide. All right, then I'm gonna set the bottom one to ease out quad to match our slider settings, but this one I'm gonna set to, instead of linear, in quad. All right. And I think now um, you're kind of seeing the imitation of that parallax <laughs> uh, take place. To finish off, um, we're going to take the left button and we're basically just going to duplicate uh, this. Slide moves right. And so instead of moving it um, 8%, we're going to move it negative 8%. All right, so now if we move to the right, you can kind of see a little bit of a parallax motion. And if we move to the left, you're seeing the same thing. All right, so I know it's not quite as beautiful as <laughs> what is on my Ara, but it's incredible that just with the slider component and workflow interactions, and uh, how long have I been recording? Um, I don't know, five minutes? I don't really know what time it is. Um, just in that short amount of time, able to recreate something that is probably using a complex JavaScript library to do that. So I hope this was helpful and maybe just taught you some things about building sliders and how to have fun um, adjusting uh, like a very common component. And uh, yeah, feel free to leave your project in the comments below and love to check out if you actually use this method um love to check out you using it on your projects so all right guys thanks have a good one